Hi, Pisces. Welcome to your February 2018 Astro Update. It's Rena here. Okay, Pisces. Well, February for Pisces is always going to be a good time, isn't it? Most of you probably love when February comes around again. And this is because this is your solar return. Now, technically, your solar return doesn't happen until your actual birthday. But as soon as the sun goes from uh, Aquarius to Pisces, and that will differ year by year, this year it's happening on the 18th, you can breathe a big sigh of relief because when the sun is in the sign right before you, that is your 12th house. And usually people, um, I would say if, if we're talking about your solar chart, which is th those people who are uh, listening right now who have Pisces as a sun sign, this is your solar chart, or a natal chart for the rising sign, regardless, um, I think that you can kind of pinpoint when you feel the most like groggy <laughs> and unmotivated. And a lot of times it will be those periods of time right before the sun enters your first house. And it's like you spring back to life. And of course, you know, sometimes, especially Mars, Mars is an inner planet, but Mars doesn't always cooperate. It, it can uh, either, you know, like in this case, it's lagging behind some of these other inner points. And uh, I, I guess I'll just get right into it because now that I brought up Mars, uh, Mars is in Sagittarius throughout the whole month of February. And of course, February is a short month. But, but Mars entered Pis uh, Pisces, Sagittarius in late January and will be in Sagittarius all throughout February going into March. So like for, I don't know how long, maybe the first week or two. And this means that we're talking about Pisces 10th house of career. So you've just had a stint of two and a half years of Saturn and Sagittarius in this house. And this is not the same type of energy, obviously, because we're talking about different planets and their influence is going to be different. Mars is about your get up and go, about your ability to um, put things into to motion and your desire to do it. Mars is about desire. It can be sexual desire, desire for success, your career, anything, the zest for living. And so some of you may be feeling like you're really putting your career into overdrive. And I wouldn't be surprised if some Pisces people are like, what is, what has gotten into me? I don't even recognize myself? Why am I being so driven? Well, um, you've already had the Saturn visit here and Saturn rules this house. So that was a very good time f for getting th the foundation set for your career. And now it's just like fill in the blanks. All it takes is a little bit of elbow grease and you're going to be very successful. And that's what is going on for you in February. It's funny. Um, there are a lot fewer transits, signs going into, planets going into different signs than I see in normal months. And I don't think it's just because February is a short month. I just think it's kind of like um, qu rather quiet. And by the way, we're not having a full moon in the whole month. And this is because on the 31st of January, there's a blue moon in Leo. And so it's the, we're, we're being, um, swept into the month with this change agent. And by the way, if you wanted to know exactly how this is going to play out for you, um, 
Pisces, Leo is your sixth house of health. So you're going to see something transpire um, that it can, and it's also your work environment. So look for any, th this may not happen on, on the 31st of January, but look for any uh, changes to your workplace. Maybe um, you break off very decisively with a particular company. And this has to do with your ambitions. You're so driven that you can see how something is holding you back. Health-wise, you may be going through an intense transformation in your, in your uh, health regimen, including uh, detoxification. Maybe some of you have been really researching it and you're doing some <laughs> long-term fast or something like that. I don't know how that would uh, work for you. It, it, I guess it all depends on the individual of what you decide to do. But definitely, you know, remember that lunar eclipses are very powerful full moons. So there's a very purge, uh, what would you say, purgative? There's a purging effect at the time of any full moon. And this is why um, some religious traditions, they fast at that time. But the, the cumulative effect could be something where you are really uh, detoxifying yourself. Or, or doing some kind of um, routine, maybe even um, having to do with physical stuff like saunas and things. I don't know. But anyway, getting on with things, on the 10th of the month, Venus goes into your sign, which is really nice because in the first house, Venus allows you to really promote yourself in the best way possible. So for people who are trying to get work, they can come across very gracious and um, people want to help them. They, they like what they see. It also may be the case that you feel more beautiful. You attract uh, a love partner to you on the basis of well, you think it's on the basis of looking good, but there's a special little something that you are providing, uh, a glow that is not directly attributable to any kind of beautification that you've made. It just is like on, on a very subtle level. So basically, for the first 10 days of the month, you're going to have Venus in that 12th house. By the way, when I talk about the 12th house, this is the house that you rule and your ruler Neptune is associated with Pisces. So the 12th house is the house of mysticism, dreams, like literal, like your dream life, uh, past lives, you know, so anything mystical. And it's the house, it's called the house of undoing because it is um, connected to Neptune. And so it can be addictive tendencies, secrets, mental health issues, because it's like deeply embedded memories and things like that. And like past lives, it doesn't get more deeply embedded um, memories than that. With Venus in that 12th house, there you may have been dealing uh, starting in January with a karmic relationship, whether it's a twin flame situation, somebody that you have, you can't shake from your life. And you feel like, when am I ever going to get this person, you know, out of my uh, uh, Kool-Aid? <laughs> They're all up in my Kool-Aid. Okay. So um, on the 15th, there is a new moon solar eclipse. Again, it's in this house that is the past life sector, which is for you happens to be in Aquarius. So this new moon is going to be, well, I'm saying a new moon, it's a, called a solar eclipse, um, 27 degrees of Aquarius. So if you have any planets 
around that, they'll be hitting that, that point. And it's going to be um, very powerful in terms of propelling you forward with something that is from the spiritual side of life. And maybe positive developments with your spiritual goals. And by the way, there's no reason why this couldn't also dovetail with your career if you're doing something along the lines of energy healing or being a yoga teacher, then this may directly impact your career as well. On the 17th of the month, Mercury goes into Pisces, your sign. So Mercury has been in that 12th house. And uh, sometimes Mercury in the 12th house can make you a bit confused about what it is that you really want. You know, uh, Mercury is our thoughts. And sometimes we go back and forth on our thoughts based upon what day it is. And we get uh, one day we want one thing, the next day we want another. Not everybody is like that to the same extent. But Pisces people certainly can waver in, in what it is that they want because you are a mutable water sign. And so you're very much impressionable. You, can, you tend to take on um, the influence from those around you. And that can make you doubt the things that you formerly thought you wanted. And so if you think about the symbol of Pisces, it's the fish that's swimming in two opposite directions. Because, and, and, you know, the fact that I happen to live with somebody with Mars and Pisces, I know this all too well, uh, where you have someone who is one day, this is what I'm about. This is what I want. And because Mars is your ambition. So it's like, this is, I'm gung ho about this. I'm going to follow this path. And then a couple of days later, the person's doing something completely different. It can be crazy making for the rest of us, uh, especially I should start a support group for people who are, who have, uh, Mars and Capricorn like I do, because we tend to be, uh, it's, it's considered like the, um, the exaltation of Mars in that um, Capricorn, uh, the energy of Capricorn is that of planning. Uh, so Mars and Capricorn is the, the military planner that's very incremental and very much about doing things um, little by little. And Pisces, Mars and Pisces, or even the sun in Pisces is much more scattered, uh, sometimes. And, but some of you, you may have actually Mars in, I think you could possibly have Mars in, Pi, uh, in uh, Capricorn. Some of you, if you've, if you know what your chart is, you might have Mars in Capricorn. Um, so anyway, that was a little bit of, a a detour, but, um, just watch your thoughts. Make sure that you're on point. I think uh, on the 17th, you'll start to be more on point because you're going to have uh, Mercury in your own sign. So you're going to be consistent. Your thoughts, well, as consistent as a Pisces can be. Let me clarify that. Um, and, you know, the the thing about it is I joke about it, but actually it's good to be flexible and you are flexible. It really is a godsend because some people are so rigid, like fixed signs such as Taurus or Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, where they will sometimes do something over and over again um, for years and years just because they want to impose their will on the universe and it doesn't work that way. And Pisces people are much more they allow for things to happen. There has to be like a, a balance. You don't want to be too passive, but you don't want to be too aggressive either. So hit that sweet spot. And then, as I think I said earlier, the sun goes into your sign on the 18th. 
and then you are feeling like yourself again. Some of you are going to have your birthdays in the second half of February. Happy birthday. Uh, solar returns are always great. You know, set your new moon intentions. Um, well, actually, your new moon is going to be in March. But uh, your birthday intentions, I meant to say, of the things that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months. And, um, you know, make them doable for, for the 12 month time span. If you want to buy a house, but you don't believe that you're going to be able to save the money for it in 2018, um, can you save half of the down to payment, you know, come up with goals that are realistic, that will make you feel really happy when you accomplish them. All right, Pisces. Well, that's what I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading and um, with this type of reading, the closest thing is like a natal chart interpretation or the aspects for the six months uh, in the future, which is kind of fun if you just want to see what's going on uh, for the next half of the year or so. Um, just check me out. The link is below, rainamoonastrology.com. Enjoy your solar return. Take care. Bye.